it's amazing because, you know, years ago there was this, this young lady who um, had a petite mouth seizures. Okay? She was having seizures on a daily basis. And um, does anybody know about petite mouth? Okay. So um, not the type that, you know, you have full, but just blanking out and not being able to concentrate. And um, it was interesting because uh, the, that young woman went to a chiropractor and started getting adjusted and the seizures got worse before they got better. You know, she had many more throughout the day. And uh, it, was, it was interesting, years and years of care, starting to look at her diet, starting to look at the, the habits that she had. And after about seven years, hey Dan, hey Mary, um, um, about seven years, those seizures went away. Can you hand this back? So they can sign in. I hope everybody signed in. Um, you know, and the seizures went away. And the individual then, you know, was able to get a license and go on. That woman is my wife. Okay, I went to school um, with her, and she was having seizures before we went to school. And she thought, she never wanted to tell me what was going on, but I sort of knew, you know, that something was happening. And ultimately, when people come to this, this office, it's about the way your body feels. Like, you know, <laughs> Anne-Marie, thank you, you know, uh, thank you, you know, she's like, it's gone, I'm not going back to the medical doctor, you know. I mean, it's amazing what the body can, can and can't do. And when we do these workshops, um, we are very grateful that you're here because you're making the effort to learn. You're making the effort to be um, something, uh, something and someone that is taking the knowledge and actually putting it into practice. One of the things that I urge people that is be open-minded. Um, make sure that you have a good open mind and maybe take one one nugget of information with you um, enough to say okay maybe I can share this with someone and if you see it in your heart bring someone to one of the workshops so they can at least learn because ultimately in our community um, you know in our community it's us that is going to tell people okay that there is a difference that there's something different that they can do to stay healthy and get get healthier so having said that Roger said jokingly earlier, so now I'm going to find out why it's better to eat celery than to have a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, um, but, ultimately, but ultimately, we're going to start with this workshop. And keep in mind that this workshop is to allow you to understand how if you want to eat vegetarian, you are eating healthier. But also there are, are points in this for anybody that's not vegetarian that they can use um, in order to um, in order to make add some good things to their diet so that they can improve upon their improve upon their health. Okay, and go ahead, Nancy. Um, so, what's unhealthy vegetarian eating? We will talk about a okay. little bit about that. Okay, um, because there are a lot of people out there that are vegetarian that don't eat well at all, um, and they're actually heavy and overweight, which is not predominantly what it is, but uh, predominantly when you're vegetarian. But we have to understand what vegetarian means first, okay, and what it is. So having said that, having said that, I like to start with this workshop, and with the understanding that. Ultimately, it's your body that is assimilating all this stuff and doing everything that's going on. So having, what is a vegetarian? So this is a discussion that I have a lot with um, people that are vegetarian, okay? A person who does not eat or does not believe in eating meat, fish, fowl, or in some cases any food um, derived from animals as eggs or cheese, but subsists on vegetables, fruits, nuts, grains, etc. Um, do not eat meat or fish. Some do consume dairy and some vegetarians consume eggs. Lacto-vegetarian, eating dairy products. Ovo-vegetarian, eating eggs. Do not eat gelatin or other animal byproducts. While vegetarians do not eat meat, most vegetarians do not mind using other animal-derived products, example, fur, leather, or wool. Okay, so the thing is, some of the reasons why some people eat it is because like, it's a moral thing, but yet they wear the leather and they wear, you know, so it's sort of a, it's sort of like a, it, to me it's very hypocritical in, the, in that sense, but, but um, I had, I don't know if any of you know Dr. Jenna that used to work here. She was one, she was a vegetarian, but she used to eat cheese. She would eat chicken periodically, not a lot, but periodically, and she ate fish. And, um, and I would say to her, you're not vegetarian. 
And she would argue with me that she was. And I was like, you're not, though, because the true definition of vegetarian is so... And she goes, well, no, that's a vegan. And I was like, when did it change? <laughs> but, you know, when did, when did it change? So, so ultimately, you know, so ultimately, understanding, I'm approaching it from someone who is a vegetarian, is someone that doesn't eat animal byproducts. Not they're vegan, they don't eat animal byproducts. So that's the way I look at it, and that's for my world, because I eat meat, so I'm not a vegetarian. Um, but I have, was a vegan at one time. When I graduated from school for anywhere, it was about 12 months, I wasn't eating the stuff, but I had to learn how to eat um, healthier, and I was. It was very healthy. Now, if you think about it, jokingly, like Roger said, why is it better to eat celery and pepperoni pizza? But what are, what are some of the benefits that you may derive from eating a vegetarian-based diet? Who, who has? And don't tell me none, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you have more control over where your food comes from. That's true. That's a good point. I've never, I've never, no one has ever said that. That's true, though. You do have more control over because you can actually choose to buy local, which I always encourage. Um, choose to buy organic or non-organic. You can choose. I mean, so you do have a lot of, a lot of control over where it comes from. You can have a little bit of control with meats if you, you know, buy local, you know, or if you fish local, or you know. So you can have some control, but with the vegetables, you may have some more control, especially if you're planting your own. Um, anything else? You don't have to worry about cholesterol. Right. So cholesterol, and and I would I would I would fast forward to say make sure you come to the heart healthy class. So because we talk a lot about the cholesterol there, and the fallacies of it. But cholesterol is something because that is a derived animal product. Actually, um, some of the highest highest uh, highest intakes of cholesterol come from shellfish, like lobsters and shrimp. And most people don't know that. And, and people are like, I'm a vegetarian. I eat lobster, but I eat shrimp. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Okay, so, but that's that's true. Go ahead, Vicki. Yeah. Um, you actually live longer. I watch this program. Well, Michael Pollan, who writes a lot of books like In Defense of Food and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And there's actually been a lot of studies that plant-based diet people live a lot longer. There are some studies that that show that show that. Um, and but the thing is, why do you think they may live longer? Well, I think because they're healthier probably in other ways, too. Right, they, they make healthier activity. choices. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, and that's part, of the, that's part of the process. So you have to look at the whole picture um, because ultimately um, if you look at like the paleo diet and the way um, our ancestors um, ate, most of those people lived very long lives. They lived very long lives, but they did not... Um, they did not just eat vegetables. They ate meats, they ate, you know, they ate a lot of things, but they were also very active. Okay, and when they did die, they usually died of some sort of trauma. You know, like they got, you know, eaten eat by, by a dinosaur. Yeah, 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 <laughs> eaten by a dinosaur, you know, <laughs> born by a pig, you know. <laughs> so those are the things. So ultimately, I always try to put it out there what, the way I'm approaching it and try to get people's feedback on what's going on here. So this is what they say a vegan is. Veganism is a philosophy and compassionate lifestyle whose adherents seek to exclude the use of animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. So now what they're doing is they're differentiating between the ones that actually wear the food, wear the stuff that comes from animals and not. These people don't do any. So these, some people might call them crunchies. <laughs> I don't mean anything by that. That's just, you know. Vegans ende uh, endeavor not to use or consume animal products of any kind. Vegans do not consume meat, eggs, milk, honey, or any food that is derived from animals. Do not use any animal-derived products, example, for a leather wool. Okay, so, um, you know, this is, this is the basic difference between the vegetarian and the vegan. Okay, but ultimately, in my mind, they're the same people. Because if you look back, you know, what is vegetarian? They've just differentiated the ones that don't eat meat byproducts, but it still doesn't make sense to me. So, um, so from an example, from an example, I don't know why you have to differentiate. It doesn't make sense to you. Either you are or you're not. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Oops, going backwards. All right. So proper ha habits. Vegetarian germs can meet all the recommendations for nutrients. The key is to consume a variety of foods and the right amount of foods to meet calorie needs. Um, you know, group recommendations for age, sex, activity level. Um, and variety of foods needed for nutrient adequacy. Nutrients that vegetarians may need to focus on include protein, iron, calcium, zinc, and vitamin B12. 
Now, if you compare the, ve the, the vegetarians to the normal general population, they're not, they're not, um, they don't, they don't have as many deficient, they're, they're not more deficient than the regular population. However, that doesn't mean they're healthy because the norm of the population is not healthy because they're not getting the nutrients either. So, so the thing is, you have to make sure that you understand where they're coming from and where it's relative to. And these are the things that you look at. Um, many, many women who, um, many women who are, become pregnant that are vegetarian, what do you think they have to add to their diet? Calcium. 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 Iron. Yeah. Iron is a big one. And you can get iron from, from plant-based sources, mm -hmm. but iron is a big one there. And, and again, Compared to the general public, they're not more anemic than the general public, but then again, the general public doesn't need healthy enough to get the proper nutrients either. So this is an important aspect of uh, things that you look at. Protein is another one. Protein can come from many sources. And, um, and I have a couple of things. I, I didn't make handouts of them. If you want them, you let me know, and you leave a, a note next to it, and I'll, I'll, I'll print them out. This one... Um, is this is actually from the government, believe it or not, and you, you, you know from the government. If whether you believe in the government or not is not my. Not <laughs> it's not, yeah. But the thing is, it gives you minimal guidelines. It gives you minimal guidelines to a healthy vegetarian eating. Okay, these are minimal guidelines. It tells you how much of a, a cup a day, and it actually calculates it for different um, different levels of. Uh, different levels of calorie intake. So, you know, anywhere from a thousand calories to 20, I think 2600. Um, can you tell which end I'm on? Sorry. Um, to 2600. <laughs> okay. So the thing is, it gives you how much you should eat and how much uh, these things, uh, these things you should look at. And, you know, um, one of the things w of, that you have to look at is where, where the, what type of proteins, what type of things that are coming from um, from these types of foods, like um, iron, there's two types. Okay, there's non-heme iron and there's heme iron. Okay, and one is, and the ones that that is in the um, that is in the vegetables is non-heme. So you have to have other supplements to help absorb it. So you have to know, and that's more advanced in processing um, than this workshop. But this is just basic guidelines and understanding how to eat healthier. And if you can eat, you even take some of this information and actually incorporate it into your diet, you're going to be healthier. Okay, because what's going to end up happening is you're going to eat healthier foods and it's going to give you the nutrients that you need. Okay, so nutrients to focus on. So protein has many important functions in bodies and essential for growth and maintenance. Protein uh, needs can be easily meet, met by eating a variety of plant-based foods. Combining different protein sources in the same meal is not necessary. Sources of protein for vegetarians and vegans include beans, Nuts. And you know, this is a tough one now. Why? Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, yeah. Why is this one a tough Allergies. one? Yeah, so many people, like all of a sudden, how did everybody get yeah. allergic to, to nuts? It's just, it's really weird. It's really weird how everybody all of a sudden is allergic to nuts. So somewhere along the line, you know, I, I don't even want to uh, guess where it came, had happened, but we, huh? you know, the government did it, right? You know, um, but there's a lot of theories behind it. and. Uh, you know, why it's happened, but that's important. Peas, believe it or not, and soy products. Now, when you look at soy products, you're looking at more of the fermented type of stuff, like tempeh and veggie burgers, um, but you gotta, you gotta be careful because they're starting to now overproduce on soy. Okay, and you're getting a lot of GMO or genetically modified mm -hmm. soys, and even soy, you know, like I've, I sort of avoid so, soy protein isolates, um, which they use in a lot of the bars and stuff that you get. But the thing is, it's, it's at least a baseline of where you can start to get, get the proteins that you need um, for someone, someone that's eating. And then you can start switching into other, other sources of protein. Um, again, a vegetarian is not, if they're having dairy products in my mind, but milk products and eggs are also a good protein source for lacto-ovo vegetarians. And this is the thing. If you have to add this, why, they, why is it considered vegetarian? You know, I mean, it's like you have to add the distinction. It doesn't make sense. Eggs are an amazing source of protein. 
Um, they've gotten a bad rap because of cholesterol. Okay, but we need a certain amount of cholesterol in our body. And as we go, go get older, the cholesterol levels go up. The reason they go up is because the cholesterol feeds the, the, the cell membranes of the body. And it actually, um, it, it actually attaches to help protect cell membrane function and brain function. Okay, because the, so when we're lowering it, you know, are we doing more damage or not? That's a question that we have to look at. So these are some of the sources here. Again, um, I have um, a whole list from another uh, PowerPoint because I used two different ones. Um, but I have a whole list of uh, protein and vitamin B12 sources um, on a sheet. So if you guys want this, let me know. I'll make a copy of it and give it to you. Um, it's a little fuzzy um, because it came from um, it came from another another source. But it gives you not only uh, not only the vegetables, but it also gives you algae and animal products that has it on there. So I include everything. Um, iron functions primarily as a carrier of oxygen in the blood. Iron sources for vegetarians and vegans include iron fortified breakfast cereals. And again, this here is as a guideline. What's the bad thing about breakfast cereals? Processed sugar. Processed yeah. sugar. Okay. The, you have to be, add glutens. Okay, because you know, because that you know, so you have to be very careful when you go by guidelines. You can start with these guidelines, but then you have to fine tune and see how your body responds to these things. So, but why is it that they have to fortify the cereal? You know, I mean, it's like, why would you do it? It's not natural, you know, I mean, it's not natural. So, it's an important thing um, that you have to look at. You also have to rule out there are some people, there's a, um, there's a, a consideration you have to take into effect, and it's usually. Um, people that have like an English type background or somewhere in that, um, uh, somewhere along those like um, English or Scottish or not Irish so much, but um, hematochromatosis, which is um, too much red blood cells and too much red blood cells, they actually bleed you. Um, they actually take blood out every, uh, every week or so to make sure that your blood doesn't clump together because the red blood cells are so huge. But it's important to understand that what happens is <clears throat> What happens is the red blood cells, the red blood cells are replaced every 120 days in our body. Every 120 days, we have new red blood cells that are created by the marrow and everything that's going on. The red blood cells are supposed to be shaped like this. They're circular and in the middle, they look like a donut sort of kind of. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the iron hooks in. If the iron is in here, the heme, the heme iron is in here. It attracts the oxygen in which is O2, it attracts, it connects to this and it carries it throughout your body. Okay, there is a disease out there, which one, which one do you think I'm thinking about? That sickle cell. Mm -hmm. sickle cell. Sickle cell, what ends up happening, why do they call it sickle cell? Because it looks like a sickle. The red blood cell looks sort of like that. Okay, what happens is there's, there's a component of it, there's a component of it that's taken out. It's taken out. It's in a hydroxy at a B6 at a B6 level, and it's taken out. Um, and it's taken out, and it misshapes this. This is an adaptation. Who knows what it's an adaptation to? Uh, it's a malaria. 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 Mal what happened was in um, in Africa, malaria was rampant, and and what ended up happening was. The CT fly, which carries the, the components, uh, the host of the, um, of, the, of the malaria, injects it and it attaches perfectly to the round one. It attaches perfectly to the round one, but when it's shaped like this, it doesn't attach. So it's an adaptation naturally of the body to understand that, hey, we have to change these things. But it's important, there's iron still in there, so we still have to make sure that we feed that. So ultimately, those people didn't die from clots and stuff because what? Because they move. And they eat foods that <coughs> supply the nutrients that they need. So from, a, so from this standpoint, this, you have to be very, very careful. Um, spinach, um, again, there are some people that have like thyroid conditions or certain conditions that can't have spinach. You have to be, you have to know, you have to know what your blood type, your blood levels, what things that your bodies can handle. Kidney beans, black eyed peas, lentils, turnip greens, um, beans are great, but what do they leave behind? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, turnip greens, molasses, blackstrap molasses is a great source of iron. Um, in the old days, it's one of the, it's one of the wives to old wives tales they used to give them to people that were anemic. It's it's true. Okay, whole wheat breads. Again, you have to be careful of the weeds, um, peas, and some dried fruits, dried apricots, prunes, and raisins. The only problem with the dried fruits is, again, 
they're processed. So they, the things that they use to process it, you have to be careful of. So um, these are basics of what you want to eat properly. Calcium, who said calcium? There's a couple of you that said calcium. Um, calcium is huge, okay, um, in, in vegetarians. Uh, again, there are, you can get them from some dark leafy, green leafy vegetables. As a matter of fact, it, from the dark green leafy vegetables, they are going to be more accessible to your body. Okay? Um, eating vitamin C um, with some of this stuff helps to absorb some of the stuff, but then you have to be careful because it might interfere with iron absorption. So there's, there's, there's a balance, there's a balance there. So you have to look at these things. Um, again, soy milk is not bad if it's, again, but it's fortified. So uh, calcium fortified breakfast cereals, they fortify these things because they know you need them, but the problem is when you fortify them, they're processed. So if you can get them from um, others. Orange juice is not bad, you just have to be careful with orange juice because orange juice is congestion forming. A lot of people drink orange juice when they have a cold and guess what? It just produces more mucus. You have to be very careful of that. But it's high in vitamin C and calcium if it's, um, so if it's there. Um, tofu made with calcium sulfate and some dark green leafy vegetables. Specifically collard greens. Who eats collard greens here? You do. Okay. Where is collard greens really, really popular? South. The South. I mean, it's like I you say it up here and people are like, what the hell are collard greens? You know, but they actually do taste really good. You know, things like turnip greens, bok choy. Bok choy is a, is a Chinese broccoli. It is awesome. It tastes great. Um, things like broccoli rabe, which is, a, is like the baby broccoli type stuff, is really good. That, that has that stuff on mustard greens. Um, amount of calcium that can be absorbed from these foods varies. Consuming enough plant foods to meet calcium needs may be unrealistic for some. Calcium supplements are another potential source. So if you're not, you have to look at sesame seeds or tahini, amazingly high in calcium naturally. Okay, um, my wife likes, um, she uses uh, tahini and jelly instead of peanut butter and jelly. So you can get it as a paste, you put it on, and that's the way she, that's the way she eats it. Tahini has an amazing, it's, it's in a lot of Middle Eastern foods. It's usually put into hummus. Um, it's usually, or as people say here, hummus. Um, uh, it's put into um, it's put into some of the um, some of the sauces they use on the Mediterranean foods. So those are the things that we look at. So yeah, the food you're eating is good. Just add some of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> zinc. Um, zinc is a is a metal. It's a, it's a it's a heavy metal that we need in our body. Zinc is important for immune function. It's important for processing. It's important for many, many things, many bio biochemical effect, um, uh, factors. Um, but the source of zinc for vegetarians and vegans includes many types of beans. White beans, kidney beans, and chickpeas. Do you know what chickpeas makes? Hummus. There you go. Eat hummus. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, you know, really, you know, there are so many different flavors and so many different things. And it's interesting how mainstream has become. Okay, um, many years ago it was not, but it's the zinc is in there again. Anything fortified you can do, but um, not wheat germ. Remember the old wheat germ commercials? <laughs> you know, um, and so wheat germ. Um, you can add wheat germ into anything. Okay, um, and it's, she's making faces. I don't like pumpkin seeds. Oh, you don't like pumpkin seeds? Oh, I just think they're gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, pumpkin, so don't eat pumpkin seeds. Eat something else. Um, you know, so so those are the those are the healthy eating things that you can do. Vitamin B12. Now again, um, is milk and eggs. It's in dairy products. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, some breakfast cereals, soy milk, veggie burgers, and nutritional yeast um, has B12. B12 is a big one. Um, B12 is a big one because that's that helps with it, it helps with intrinsic factor. Um, what exactly does you, nutritional yeast do for a body? We sell a lot of it at the store, but it's it's do? it's an addition. It's an it's this. It's B12. It helps you with a lot of the B12. That's basically what it is. It just has it has a component in it that allows allows for B12. Because a lot of people are lacking in B12, and you'll find there are a lot of vitamin supplements and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But B12 intrinsic factor is helps with blood formation. Okay, so what ends up happening is it, it's, it's helping support blood formation, and the intrinsic factor is actually necessary in birthing and, and the, the hormonal process for women uh, when you're going through that. So that's a good question. Uh, that's a really good question. I'm sure there's other things that it's good for, um, but those are things I know that, it's, mm -hmm. that, that it works for. So, um, so, those are the, so those are the ones that are going there. This stuff here all came from choosemyplate.gov mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's a vegetarian nutrition resource list. Um, why do I use the, 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 the government stuff? Because it's basic. It's basic stuff. If you want to get more into detail about it, you can. I could talk about this stuff for the next 45 minutes if I wanted to, and then extend it into an eight-hour workshop and get you know continuing ed credits and the whole nine yards. That's not what we're here for. This is here for you guys. This is here for you guys to come and learn basics, start the basics, be aware of what those basics are, and then start making small changes. Um, I just want to see if it's going on. Yes, yes. You know, to make small ch to make small changes that allow you to make healthier choices. Okay, because healthy vegetarian eating, you have to be aware of the the, the nutrients that are lacking or may or may not be lacking, but if you're eating healthy as a vegetarian, um, you're, usually, you're usually thinner, you usually have a different build, um, but there are vegetarians that I know. I had a woman that worked with me, a young lady, um, amazing, she was amazing. She was a vegetarian. She smoked, she drank coffee and put, um, put four, shots of, four shots of espresso into it. She used to get the turbo shots, okay, in, the, in her coffee. Okay, um, she, the foods she ate were all carbohydrates. She ate no beans, didn't like any mushrooms, didn't like any, any, um, any olives, nothing that had any sort of protein in it. Okay, and she was always struggling with her weight. She wasn't really heavy overweight, but her daughter was, and she was a vegetarian too. And she trained her on eating, on eating that way, so it's a habit that was learned. She was not a healthy vegetarian. Okay, and she drank beer like you know. I mean, on the weekends she was she she liked her beer. Okay, so so we, you know she got a wheat yeah she got her hops and you know barley and, you know so so the thing is so the thing is um, so the thing is you have to be very very aware of the healthy eating habits of vegetarian and that's that holds true for any way of eating. Okay, when you eat, you need to make sure that that after you're done eating. If you feel lethargic and out of sorts, then something you ate is not good for you. Most people eat to satiate at the time they're eating, but if you feel lethargic afterward and like you're going to pass out, guess what? There's something in there that you're either allergic to or it's not healthy for you. Okay, and each person has to experiment with it. You're making quizzical looks, John. Sorry. You know, you know, it's like, uh, no, it's, 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 it's true. Like, I love, I love pizza. I have, I grew up in New York City. I eat pizza. I put some garlic on my pizza and half an hour later, you might as well call me toast because I'm going to be sleeping because I'm allergic to garlic. Okay, and I love garlic. Okay, but the thing is, it's when I mix it with certain foods, I figured out that why I'm getting tired and why I'm warm. So it's a mixture. I figured out the combinations that make me tired. So, so there's a lot that goes with that. Having said that, having said that, make the proper choices. You guys have already started making the choices with this. This is a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle choice. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who say they're living healthy every day, like this young lady who's vegetarian, okay? And then the next day they drop dead. You know, you look at you know, you look at people, you know, that were uh, I think it was last year they had some soccer players running around and they had heart attacks on the field. You want to talk about you know people that are cardiovascular fit, okay? So what else were they doing in their lives? How are they living their lives and stressing their lives? You don't know, but make sure that you take good care of what you got, okay, and what you have, because if you take care of what you have, you're going to live a better, longer life, okay, or at least live a more fruitful life when you're alive, okay, because you never know what's going to happen, and you know, you have started the path, help teach others, help, you know, I believe truly that we're here to um, help others, and in doing so, let them know what's going on, okay, if they want to come here, Great. If they want to, I mean, is there a name that pops into your head that could benefit from either chiropractic care or just even these workshops? Is there, everybody who can think of a name, raise their hand. Okay. So, you know, I mean, and there's definitely people that, that can benefit. Why aren't you saying something? Open up your mouth. If you care, you will. They've Thank you very much. They've got to listen, though. Huh? They've got to listen. They don't have to listen. All they have to do is hear. And when they're ready and prepared, they will hear. Then and it may take a long time. It may take a long time. Yeah.
It may take a long time, but you know what? You can't give up if you keep saying it. You know, and they'll be like, oh, you're such a pain in the butt. Yeah. Well, I care about you. Mm -hmm. And some people listen, some people don't. But eventually, those people that, that do say, okay, this sort of makes sense now, they'll change. I'm like that. takes me a long time to figure things out. I'm stubborn. And your guy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is true. Hey, I'll be the first to admit it. Yes, I am a guy. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming. Yeah, Nancy, you have a question? Uh, you, you talked a little bit about combining foods. And it, I, it made me remember 